In this video, we will look at addition polymerization, also known as radic polymerization. There are three main steps to addition polymerization. They are initiation, propagation, and termination. In order to understand the mechanisms of each of these steps, I need to briefly introduce you to curly arrow notation. So curly arrow notation is used to show the movement of electrons. When drawing a chemical process, the arrows allow us to visualize how the electrons are moving. So curly arrows can have either a single head, like this, or they can be double-headed curly arrows that look like this. So a single-headed curly arrow corresponds to the movement of one electron. But a double-headed curly arrow corresponds to the movement of exactly two electrons. In this video, we are only going to be looking at the movement of a single electron using single-headed arrows. Let's investigate initiation to see what this looks like in action. Initiation is the only step of polymerization which does not involve the monomers. In order to start a polymerization reaction, we add a small amount of a chemical called an initiator to our monomer solution. Initiators are usually either azo compounds or peroxides. Heat or light is then used to break a bond in the initiator. Note that the chemical bond is made from two electrons. As shown by the curly arrows in this diagram here, uh, one electron goes to each of the oxygen atoms, creating what we call a radical. A radical is a molecule which has an unpaired valence electron. Radicals are extremely reactive, and these radicals allow the propagation step to begin. We represent the unpaired electron on a radical by putting a dot next to the atom, as you can see here. So the best way for us to get to learn how this curly arrow notation works is to put it into practice. So let's have a look at an initiation reaction. So let's imagine I have some sort of initiator that looks like this. So it's got two separate components combined, uh, joined together by a bond. Then I'm going to have that bond break down under exposure to light or heat. So when that bond breaks down, one electron goes to one half of the molecule and the other goes to the other half. So note the one head on the arrow indicates only one electron as opposed to a double-headed arrow which would indicate two electrons. So that means that we're going to get two radicals as denoted by that dot there. So now how can we use these radicals to get the propagation step to go? Well it looks something like this. I'll start up here. So I just apologize for my terrible handwriting. That's meant to say IN. It's a radical. Now I'm going to put in some of my monomer solution. So in this case, I'm just going to pick one of the most basic monomers. And one electron from the double bond will combine with an electron from the initiator, the radical electron, to form a bond between IN and the carbon. So it will look something like this. So as we can see, now this carbon on the end is a radical. So that means that it can now attack another monomer, as I'll show you by this mechanism in the step below. Forgive my writing, hopefully that could have been clearer, so this is just meant to be a C bonded to a H over here. And then we'll have this radical attack this carbon over here. And the other electron goes to this carbon here. And as we can see, my polymer, or my radical chain, is growing. So now eventually, two of these ends here, these radical ends, will eventually meet. And this is what we call termination. So there's a few ways this could happen. So the first is if it meets another radical produced from the initiation reaction. So it could look something like this. So a reaction like that, where the two radicals combine to form a bond, and thus now what we have left over is quite a stable molecule. This isn't going to react with anything, and our chain is over. Alternatively, two of these chains could react together, as shown in this reaction here. And we get a long chain, just like this, where we have an initiator on either side. Now I'd like to point out that here I've kept the chains very very short but in reality these propagation steps will occur 
many, many times, and we'll actually get these huge long polymer chains. Even though here it's only drawn with about four carbons in the chain overall, these things could be thousands of carbons long. That's what gives polymers their interesting properties. So there we go, that is the mechanism that underpins radical polymerization.